say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen outdoor version. Mm -hmm, that's right. And smoke gets in your eyes. I love it. I love the smoke. You know what? It does. Uh, there's a few things about cooking outside that's different. But you know what's not different is the temperature. Anything we're doing out here, you can do on your stove. Keep that in mind. Anything that we're cooking out here, you can do on your stove. You can do everything that we're going to cook tonight. But you were so stove. excited to get outside, weren't you? Oh, it's a beautiful day today. <laughs> 65 degrees. That's right. beautiful. So everything we're going to do tonight is either in the Dutch oven or right over the fire. Now, you don't have to be that fancy smancy to be over the fire. You can use an old grate from a grill, mm -hmm. set it up on anything you want. Watch your temperature, watch your fire. If it gets too hot, you'll know it. Move it around. Yeah. We are going to cook some really good stuff tonight. Now, this is stuff that stick to your ribs. We have not eaten that much today. We haven't. I'm starving. We're holding right. out for this. So we're going to do the whole deal. And you might wonder why we're loaded for bear here. There's a reason for that. You never know. Several years ago, we went on an Alaskan cruise. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, Alaskan cruise. That's right. We met this guy, nicest people in the world. His name was Glenn. And he says, I love everything that you do. He says, but you put too much pepper on it. I remember that. And I thought, hmm, what does that mean? Because there's no such thing as too much pepper. That means more so pepper. So I thought he must be tricky. <laughs> well, after we met him, he was a great guy. Um, when we did our show, we talked about the pepper bandit. Mm -hmm. The guy who couldn't, couldn't get enough pepper. <laughs> well, come to find out, he's real. Mm -hmm. Now here's what happened. Mm -hmm. Glenn was in Pepper Prison. I heard that. He broke out. What? Well, he's tricky. Yes. What he does, he's always got a pocket full of pepper. Yes, he does. He's done this before, mm -hmm. they should have known. Boom, he throws pepper in the guard's face. They sneeze, That's he right. grabs the keys, he's out. He's good at that. He's got a donkey waiting in the bushes. Uh -huh. Comes over here, because he knows we got all kinds of pepper. He takes off with every bit of telecherry pepper. I just got a whole new I jar know. in the mail. That's expensive too. And that's just me. Yeah, that is me. So Glenn is out and about. So if you have pepper and you cherish it and want to keep it, you might want to put it in your safe. I agree. I'm going to get a pepper safe. That's a great idea. He's out of control. <laughs> so that being said, it's time to get serious and cook some stuff. Cowboy beans. Everybody has their own version. This is one that we really, 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 really like. So we're gonna make a quick and easy version. This is a meal in itself if you choose for it to yeah, be. Yeah, it is. But we're hungry. So we're gonna have all kinds of stuff tonight. So I'm moving over to the fire. So I'm gonna be standing up and cooking for a while. And I'll have right. you hand me stuff if you will. I will. Okay, you can do as much meat as you want to in this. I prefer it a little heavy on the meat. So we're gonna go eight pieces of bacon to start with. Here's our eight pieces of bacon. What are we gonna do with that bacon grease? Oh, I don't know. I think we'll leave it in there. Now my bacon is browning up nicely. That looks lovely. Now that seems like a lot of bacon fat, but here's the deal. That's uncured bacon, so I'm not worried about anything in it. Then we're gonna come back with some onions. That's just a medium sized yellow sweet onion. Also our, our beef, which we raised ourselves, was very, very lean. It was, it was grass fed, and so there's hardly any fat in that. Now, I like cooking over a good hot fire like this. You really gotta watch it, because everything gets done quick. This is a really, really, really hot fire. Oh, by the way, our guns are only loaded with salt. You know, um, we don't wanna inflict any bodily harm on the pepper bandit. It's just a suggestion that he needs to go away. That's true. All right, it's time for some burger. Let's put half of that in. And a pound of hamburger. Now look at that beef. Look how lean it is. It almost looks like elk. So 
some bacon, onions, and beef. You know, there's all kinds of cowboy beans out there, and I've tried them a million different ways, but you know who makes them almost just like this? Who? Your mother. That's right, Grandma. It's the Grandma's beans. You give credit where credit's due. That's right. And she puts them in the crock pot for the day. Yeah, you can when do she that. She does it and takes it. That's a good uh, church lady dinner. We're going to go a cup of brown sugar, a cup of ketchup. So now the good thing about this is all the stuff that takes a long time to cook is just about cooked up. All right, let's go ahead and put our smoked seasoning in, although we're going to have some natural as well. A little bit of vinegar, a little bit of tart. Let's go with our beans. So here's about three cups. You can use any kind of beans you want. Here's about three cups pork and beans. Here's about a cup and a half kidney beans, however many you want. And my favorite, butter beans. And that's also about a cup. So now you can see we're on a high heat situation. So I'm gonna move it up just a little bit and let it continue to cook. Put a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. All right, you can see we got a nice big boil rolling. We're gonna back it off a little bit. Get it away from the fire. That's how we turn our burner down. Now I can move that back and forth and I'll keep an eye on that. Now we're gonna cook that about 40, 45 minutes and that'll be plenty good to go. So last night, we found out we were out of something. Lard, actually I have a few left, but I just, I like to make it. That's last night's leaf lard. So I thought, as you were doing your lard, your beautiful lard, mm -hmm. so what is the byproduct of lard? Cracklins. Cracklins. So I thought, okay, we got some corn, mm -hmm. and I was gonna fry some corn today, and I thought, instead of using bacon, let's take some of our lard and some of our cracklins. Good idea. Put them in a pan, put a little salt in them, and here's how we're gonna do this. So here's our simple recipe for our cracklin mm -hmm. fried corn. So we take our cracklins, put them in a skillet, get them nice and warm and crunchy. All right, now I'm gonna do just a little bit of salt. Remember, this has not been salted. This came right out of the lard process. A little bit of pepper. Then we're gonna take some onions fry up with that. We're going to take some sweet peppers. Normally we wouldn't put sweet peppers in it, but we've, we had some sweet peppers. Yeah. We had to try it. You could put some sugar if you wanted to. We're not going to. It'll be plenty sweet with the peppers and the corn. All right, now remember, these are cracklins. You don't have to use cracklins. You can use bacon. So now that my cracklings and onions and peppers are done, I'll let you let's pull dump what you that want. corn. Oh, I wish everybody could smell this. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Let's see where we're at. And we're gonna fry that up on the skillet and that's gonna be another scrumptious cowboy side. Crackling fried corn, are you kidding me? Yummy. Again, not everybody's got cracklings laying around. But if you wanted to do your own lard, it's not hard to do. Go to your butcher, ask him if he's got any pork fat, ask him if he's got any leaf lard. Look up our segment on how to render lard. You have your own lard and your own cracklings. So here's where we're at. The corn is still sizzling. I tasted it, yummy. I set it off to the side, it's staying warm. Mm -hmm. This is just like having a stove, turn things up and down. The beans are done push them off to the side, we blocked it with a piece of wood so it can't slide back over. We left the fire going because the star of the show is coming up. That's right. I got a buddy named Cody right up the road, raises pasture raised pigs. So <laughs> that's not only where we got our lard, but that's where we got our pork chops. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take these pork chops which have been marinating for about six, seven hours or so. And it's a wonderful, wonderful marinade to me for pork. Years ago, we made something for Kelly, and it was kind of like a, a moment of, okay, let's take this and this and this. Now that was venison that we did for her, but it was a mustard. It was kind of acidic and sweet. So I kind of took 
that and added to it and we made this marinade and it's just absolutely beautiful. So let's give you the ingredients for that marinade real quick. All right, here's the dry ingredients first. I put three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper, one and a half teaspoon of minced onions, half a teaspoon of basil, half a teaspoon of rosemary, six tablespoons of brown sugar. Now we're getting to our liquid part. Three tablespoons of beer. If you don't like beer, you can use apple cider vinegar or something like that. Also, four tablespoons of lemon juice, four tablespoons of your favorite mustard. And this one I had a sweet and spicy mustard. One and a half teaspoons of hickory smoke, one and a half tablespoons of soy to get your salt in there, and six garlic cloves diced fresh. So now what I wanna do is I wanna get my fire all at an equal level. I want any hot spots. And that's what I'm gonna put my meat over, my marinated meat. Now these are not tiny pork chops at all. Now keep in mind, in the old days, pork was 180, now it's 150. We're looking for that perfect 150 temperature. Have your meat thermometer ready, and look at that. That's a beautiful grill mark right there. I'm gonna turn it like thus. Listen, it's dripping fat. That's getting too much attention right there. So I'm moving it over. All right, now, because we're eating big. That's right. We need bread. We do. I love bread. This is our go-to Dutch oven bread recipe. Now we do all kinds of it. We've done mm -hmm. rosemary, pepper, Really, a really peppery glow. Oh, yeah. I love this. I mean, it really, when you eat it, you're like, oh, black pepper. Yes. But it's good. like, wow, that's good with butter. This is our go to recipe. Instead of reinventing the wheel, let's just show you that recipe real quick. We've done it a million times before. This is always our go to. And then we'll come back. It should be done. 425, again, in a 10 inch, mm -hmm. is 19 on top, 8 on the bottom. That gives you 425. If you're in your house, 425 is on your oven. 425 is 425 wherever you are. For 40 minutes. Oh, Boo just jumped up. I thought it did. All right, here we go. All right, here's the basic ingredients. It's really so simple. You got two cups of Weisenberger, just white flour, and then some white wheat flour or some wheat flour. You're gonna need a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and a cup and a half of warm water. Two and three quarters teaspoons of yeast. I'm gonna come back and get that working with just a pinch of sugar. About a teaspoon of salt in here. Let that work. All right, now my yeast and water has set for five minutes. I'm gonna take my three cups of assorted flours and I'm just gonna gently mix them up. Very quickly, it becomes nice and doughy. Now, I'm gonna take this, and the most lengthy part of the process is the rising of the flour. I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna take it inside where it's a little bit warmer. I'm gonna let it set for about four hours. All right. So our four hours has passed. Now we're gonna pull our dough out of here, and you're gonna see pretty quickly that we got some good looking dough right here. I'm not gonna do much to it. I'm just gonna work it a little bit. Now here's the part where you're probably thinking, okay, I've never cooked in a Dutch oven. If you're a pro, you know the deal. You can almost eyeball your coals and know exactly how much you have to have for 300 degrees, 350 degrees. In this case, we need about 425 degrees. So how do you do that? Well, look here at this book. The handy little lodge book tells you right here, Dutch oven cooking. This is a 12 inch. If I want a 425 degree temperature, which I do for bread, this is gonna cook about 40 minutes. And you can do this with coals from wood. It makes it a lot easier if you start out with charcoal briquettes. To get a 425 degree temperature, we need 10 on the bottom, 21 on the top, which we've done. I've also taken some lard and put in the bottom of that pan. 
Now I'm gonna take my dough, and you can see how nice that looks. I'm gonna put it back in the bowl, and I'm gonna let it rise for another half hour. While we have that last half hour of dough to rise, that's when we get our pan preheated and ready to go. All right, the half hour has passed. We're gonna do one more little roll around here. We're gonna take our bread, get it in a nice little round shape. And we're gonna pop it directly in the pan. Here's our future bread. And we are good to go. Now keep an eye on your briquettes. If you see them burning down, you can replace them. Give that a bit. Now we'll go see what Nikki's doing in the kitchen. All right, we're cooked down nicely here. Let's take this off. Oh, wow. Oh, look, yes. at that. look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Yummy. Now, in a minute, when that cools down, we'll bring it out on the table. Cut it up. And we'll serve it up. Now, I want you to look. I want you to look at that beautiful, wonderful, hot Delicious. bread. Now, when you get it right off the, go ahead and put some pieces of butter on there. When you get it right out of the fire like that, and it smells so good and it's so fresh. Ready? I am. I can't wait to eat. I'm starving. All right, let me ask you something. As we look at that, in all honesty, what would you want to try first? Man, I want it all. Yeah, but which one looks the best to you? The corn looks really good. The, corn the colors. Really good. Yeah, the colors in the corn. I'll tell you what, you try the corn, I'll try the pork chop. Oh, wow. Mm. Guess who got sick the last time we made lard because somebody ate too much crap oh, I did. And actually, the smell of the lard cooking last night kind of made me <laughs> nauseous. But this oh, what did you think about that corn? That is so good. It's got great. What do you get when you eat? It's just, it's, it's sweet. How is it? It's kind of sweet. Did it taste sweet in there or no? Mm -hmm. It's really sweet. And I like, maybe it's the peppers and the onions that make it like that. And the well, lard. And sweet corn. Mm. And sweet peppers. Really good. Some, a lot of people put sugar in there. You don't need it. It tastes like it has sugar. Peppers. Oh my. It tastes like sugar to me. It's almost like candy. I like it a lot. And those cracklings. Mm. Again, if you don't have cracklings, you can use bacon. I want to try the pork chop then. You haven't tried the pork chop yet? Mm. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Mm -hmm. So subtle, but so perfect. I think your marinade tenderized that by letting mm. it sit in that with the beer. Oh, that's good. That's probably my favorite pork chop. And the cowboy beans, come on. Those are always good. Come on. But these are two of our go-tos, the cowboy beans and mm. the bread. Mm. Oh, that bread, look at that. Look at the butter melting on that. Do you that. need a piece of bread? Oh yeah, I need <laughs> First of all, we're in a cowboy setting. Do we need a cowboy song? Maybe we do while we eat our bread. Go to late, eat you. I face the barren waste without the taste of water, cool water. Old Dad and I with throats burnt dry and souls that cry for water. Nights are cool and I'm a fool. He stars a pool of water. Cool water. But with the dawn I'll wake and yawn and carry on to water. Keep a moving then, don't you listen to him then? He's a devil, not a man, and he spreads the burning sands with water. Old oh, Dan, can you see that big green tree where the water's running free? And he's waiting there for you and me. Water. The 
shadows sway and seem to say, tonight we pray for water, cool water. And way up there he'll hear our prayer and show us where there's water. Keep on moving then, don't you listen to him then He's a devil, not a man Then he spreads a burning sand with water Oh, Dan, can you see that big green tree Where the water's running free And he's waiting there for you and me Water Well, that bread is not hard. Now, right. It has to set up for a while and you have to knead it and so on and so forth. But you know what? It wasn't too long ago that you weren't full time on the show. It looks so weird for me to be out there doing it myself. You retired. That's right. In what, 17? Yes, I did. And so right after that, she became on the show. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. For helping me out. This is so good. I have to eat it while it's still warm. Yeah. First, I have to tell you about a few things. If somebody came up to you, Mrs. Farmer, and mm -hmm. said, how do I get all those recipes? You would I tell them. I say timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And then if they said, I heard you had a Facebook page, but I heard it's so difficult to get on, uh, you'd probably tell them. Hit like. Like. So you got to do. Got a lot of friends on there. Talk to a lot of folks. We got some live events coming up. Yes, we do. But you know what? Now it's time to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. We'll see you next oh. week at the brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Yummy. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Emerson Farms Country Store. Something for every member of the family. Ephraim McDowell Medical Center in Danville, Kentucky. Gulf Coast Connection. Seafood straight from the Gulf to you. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky. Wilderness Road Hospitality, Stanford, Kentucky. Visit Frankfurt, Kentucky Spirited Capital City.